Hello and welcome to another edition of Feed Ace Podcast. My name is Jerry Serino and I'm your host and I'm here with talent on loan from Rush. Our military <laughs> personnel are uh, so, so important to us and uh, un unfortunately they are underappreciated in the sense that uh, they deal with a lot and they don't get a lot in return in my opinion. Uh, certainly they get admiration from I think most people. Uh, but I don't think they get paid enough. They should get paid a lot more. Same with teachers and things like that. But one of the things that we have is, uh, you know, soldiers, when they come back from their service, uh, they have a lot of challenges afterwards. We, we've all heard stories, in, including stories about, uh, you know, very, you know, well-known cases. And my guest today is Jeremy Stallnecker. Jeremy is an author. He is a Marine. And he is uh, writing and talking about um, how to help people, specifically from the military, that suffer from PTSD. So, uh, Jeremy, thanks for coming on. Well, thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Uh, it's a great topic and appreciate you having the conversation. Yeah, my pleasure. I mean, I love the military. Uh, I I didn't join the military. I don't. I just have uh, always admired uh, those that, that, that have, and it is yeah. really fantastic. Uh, I want to start with, um, with your organization. So you're the CEO of the mighty Oaks foundation. Tell us about that, uh, and what, what it's all about. Yeah. So the mighty Oaks foundation, we serve veterans, active duty service members, first responders, and their spouses. And really we, we started back in 2012 and we were born out of a desire to help combat veterans who were coming home and uh, the Veterans Administration, although they do some things right, were doing a lot of things that were not helpful <laughs> to those who were transitioning mm -hmm. home. And many who were dealing with combat trauma issues and post-traumatic stress disorder and didn't know where to turn or what to do. So we started working with uh, combat veterans first. Now we work with uh, you know all of those in the veteran and first responder and military community. But we talk about trauma. We talk about what it is, where it comes from. Maybe it is related to military service or service in the community. Perhaps it is related to childhood and you bring that into your service and what you do in the military um, kind of blows that up. And then you transition out of the military. You have very little direction, perhaps don't know where to go for help. And uh, so many struggle. Uh, we know the suicide epidemic among veterans is I say we know, a lot of people may not know, but uh, the official number is more than 20 veterans a day commit suicide, take their lives. More than 20 a day. Uh, there's a lot of research right now. Uh, a recent study was done that says that number is probably closer to 40. We don't exactly know because it's mm -hmm. hard to keep track. Um, in the active duty community, it's, it's increasing for years. We said it was one active duty service member a day takes their life. Now it's almost five. Uh, a lot of things have contributed to that, but uh, it's unacceptable and we need to deal with that. In, in addition to the suicide issue, we have broken relationships and lives without purpose and direction. And we do our very best bringing men and women to one of our facilities across the country. They spend a week with us. Everyone who teaches, everyone who's involved with our program has come through our program. So they have a similar background, similar experience. They've begun to move forward. And in a very peer-to-peer -peer type of uh, way, they, they help others move forward as well. So there's a lot to that, but uh, we're a non-clinical program. Uh, we're a faith-based program. So we're sharing what we believe about creation and how we were created to move forward in spite of trauma. And uh, we've seen incredible success over the years. Yeah, so important, really important. So uh, tell us about your time in the Marine Corps. Yeah. Uh, when did you enter? What What, what was your you know, what motivated you to uh, join the Marines yeah. and uh, where did it take you? Yeah, I was raised in a, uh, a very conservative Christian home. Uh, my dad, very patriotic, uh, again, did not serve in the military. I don't have a family of military service, but one of the characteristics or characters that my dad instilled in me was that of service and uh, loving the country that we have and doing mm -hmm. what we can to protect it, to defend it, to stand up for what's right. And so I was raised in that environment and in my teens, knew some Marines, knew some folks who were serving and really believed that was the calling on my life at that time. And so I uh, went, to, went to college. I went into the Marine Corps in 1996. I did a few different deployments. My last deployment was in 2012 uh, with the initial push into Iraq. First Battalion, 5th Marines was my infantry battalion. And uh, we pushed from Kuwait into Iraq, uh, 
first KIA of the war, Lieutenant Shane Childers is one of our Marines there on the southern border. We made our way all the way to Baghdad, April 10th, 2003. The Battle of Baghdad was our battalion as well. Uh, just an incredible time, any way that you look at that. And then, uh, and then came home. I transitioned out of the military, transitioned actually into ministry of all things. And um, as, as good of a transition as that sounds like it would be, uh, I was completely lost. I was really without purpose. I, I was angry, very frustrated. Uh, and it took me a long time to get back on my feet. And thankfully, I had the right people around me, which eventually, 10 years later, uh, would bring me to the point where I understood I needed to do the same for other people. And uh, mm -hmm. that's what we've been doing. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really, really great, uh, great life, great story. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, just curious as someone who, again, I didn't serve, is, is, is the combat experience, meaning shooting and being shot yeah. at and, and the fear, you know, walk, you know, I, I, being on patrol and, and going yeah. from house to house, obviously those are scary situations, but there's a lot of people in the military that don't even fire a, a weapon. They do yeah. other things. And I, I it, besides the, the actual action, are there other aspects of the military that cause stress? One of the things that we have found over the years, and it's been really interesting, even though men and women attend our program, often talking about combat trauma. So a traumatic event connected to a combat experience. That's what we would expect. When we really start to dig down and, and understand what brought people to the place where they would come to a program like ours, uh, there is an understanding of childhood trauma, a lot of sexual childhood trauma, a lot of abuse, a lot of broken homes, that those men and women bring into their military service. They find an identity, they find a purpose, they find a direction for the first time, but they brought all that trauma with them. Mm -hmm. And they're struggling through that, but they're in an environment where they can struggle through it. But then they separate out of the military, they put the uniform in the closet, they no longer have the rank, they no, no longer have the clear structure, they no longer understand exactly yeah. what they're supposed to do. So it's in that transition that the trauma from childhood and now the lack of purpose and the lack of community, we might call it brotherhood, all of those things come to bear at the same time. And you have someone who once did something great, brought a lot of you know, trauma and baggage with them, and now they're completely lost and begin to make a series of bad decisions, self-medication, um, you know, dysfunctional relationships and all the rest of it. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been very, very interesting. Again, when we started, it was really focused. We were focused on combat veterans. But uh, now and, you know, there are certainly conflicts going on around the world. But the majority of men and women, particularly younger men and women that come through the Mighty Oaks programs, uh, are not combat veterans, but they're dealing with with so much stuff from life and from childhood that they brought into their service and now uh, are trying to figure out how to move forward in their lives. Yeah, no, that's a, that's really great. Thank you for that. Because it's again, as a non-military person, I, mm -hmm. I don't you know, I don't have yeah. that perspective and most people don't because most right. people aren't in the military or, right. or have a son or daughter uh, that is. So uh, sure. that, that's that's makes complete and utter sense. It, it yeah. really does. So I want to go through a, a few of the other th things that you're involved in because you're an author. You're also right. a fellow podcaster. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a podcast called uh, March or Die. Yeah. I want to uh, just uh, I'm going to put it up on the screen, the name of it, so people can, can awesome. see it if they're watching. But if they're listening, it's called March or Die. Uh, tell us about the show and and where people can find it if they want to listen. Sure. One of the the books that I wrote is called uh, March or Die. And that comes from a story, an event that took place in Iraq. I won't tell the whole story, but we got into a firefight on a bridge and a lot was happening all at once. And, and there was a moment where we, um, you know, my platoon had to make a decision. We were either going to stay there and die because that's what would have happened. Or we're going to get out of that X, you know, get off the X, get out of that kill zone and move to a place where we could better impact the enemy. Um, it was a moment where we had to march, <laughs> move on, or stay where we are and die. And I wrote a book that talks about my time in Iraq and makes some application to life, the March or Die book. And my podcast is, is very much in the same vein. It, it's having guests on. It's talking about issues and principles related to moving forward. We all deal with difficult things. We all have struggles and traumas and trials and <laughs> obstacles in our lives. But there is a path forward. 
Yeah. All of that, though, comes back to making a decision. Will you stay where you are and die? That could be that emotional, spiritual, relational death where you're breathing, you're going to work, but you're not making any forward progress. That's death, right? Will you stay where you are and die or will you march? And so I've had a, it's been great being able to talk about that. March or Die podcast found everywhere podcasts are found. Uh, I am on the Life Audio platform, which is part of Salem Media. Um, but you can find it on uh, Spotify and Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and everywhere else. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it's awesome. The, the picture you just threw up there, uh, I believe, is off my website, yep. jeremystallmetro.com, where is. you can find it linked out directly as well. So, yeah, a lot of great opportunities. Yep. Had some great, great guests on. Uh, man, just some – and you know how it is as a podcaster. Sometimes you have guests yeah. on, and I hope, I hope I'm not one of those, but you have guests on where you're like – well, that was adequate. We filled the time. Um, but then you also have guests on where you're like, man, that was, that's why I do this. And uh, yeah. I've had some of those on recently. It's been fantastic. Yeah, I know. I know the feeling. I, yeah. I absolutely do. And yeah, for those that are watching, I, uh, I'm, I'm sharing my screen and I'm showing Jeremy Stallnecker.com. That's where you can find uh, all of his information, books, podcasts. Yeah. So, and it looks like you also are on another podcast as well. Correct. Yeah, we have. Uh, that's right. So on Salem Media, and Salem's a you know large media company. We have uh, yeah. another podcast um, called the Situation Report, and it is more. Uh, that's more dealing with culture, what's happening in culture, how do we navigate that and understand mm -hmm. it. So uh, kind of more news of the day, um, and I enjoy that as well. So yeah, they're 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 both very different, um, but I yeah. believe I hope very helpful. Yeah, and I'm looking at some of the titles. So if if I look at the situation report, I'm looking at a title, the uh, one title of an episode, the declining faith in America. Uh, you talk about fentanyl, transgender, uh, yeah. you know. So lots of really great stuff that people could you know tune yeah. in and, and look through it. Uh, if, wherever you're listening to the, my show, you, you're going to be able to find Jeremy's right. uh, shows as well. Uh, go ahead and find them and then download them. And, uh, okay. So you also, if you're, if you haven't done enough, <laughs> you know, being a Marine and, <laughs> sure, and husband, sure. father, and, uh, uh, on two podcasts, you're also an author. Tell us about your books. The first, uh, first book I wrote was actually a book on leadership. Um, it's called leadership by design. And that was a journey for me. I know people say that, but it really was. I wrote that book to try to understand leadership, having, grown up in the Christian community and then served in the Marine Corps, two very different views of leadership. And I felt like there had to be some, some convergence there somewhere. Right. And so I wrote that book, it's called leadership by design. Um, that was very, very helpful to me. And some have found that helpful as well. March or die, which we talked about. Um, I wrote uh, several years ago. I just finished a book last year called offensive faith, uh, how to take your faith on the offense in a world that uh, really pushes back on people of faith and, uh, certainly the Christian community. I uh, wrote that with my pastor, so that was a lot of fun. And then there's two other books that uh, we have produced, the Mighty Oaks Foundation, two little books, about 10,000 words a piece. One is called The Path to Resiliency and deals with how to live a spiritually resilient life. The other one is called The Truth About PTSD. And both of those were written as resources to the men and women that, uh, that we serve. So our programs, we've had uh, about 4,500 people come through one of our week-long programs. But we have the opportunity to speak at particularly active duty units and uh, active duty military conferences. We've spoken to about 300,000 people. And those two books, Path Resiliency and The Truth About PTSD, are books that we give away. We've given away uh, tens of thousands of those to those who are serving. And so, um, again, just dealing with very basic challenges that everyone who's serving is dealing with and mm -hmm. uh, trying to get as much resource out as possible. Yeah, that's great. So definitely yeah. go to jeremystallnecker.com. And if you or someone you know uh, is in, uh, you, you might you might think, you know, if you think fit into this uh, mold of someone who mm. uh, has PTSD or, or you're just suspecting, you could connect with Jeremy, right. uh, get the books, listen to the show. Uh, so if, you know, if, even if it's not for you specifically, yeah, right. recommend it for someone else. Yeah. Uh, so I want to ask, you know, as we've been talking, it, it kind of came to my mind. So in the military, it, it would seem, I, I read a book, I, I have this, uh, this huge admiration for people in the military, specifically the, the special forces, just because I could never do it. I couldn't right. have done what sure. you did. You did either. I mean, not, not, the Marines are phenomenal. Uh, but there was, it was a story of a Navy SEAL 
who um, who ended up dying in action. But he mm. he prior to getting into the Navy, he was a drug addict and he really fought it his whole life. But he eventually, you know, he got up to, to being on SEAL Team 6. Wow. He died in action, and he, but yeah. he was a very, very good Christian. And, and um, in the book, it was written by somebody else about his life. Yeah. Um, it, they noted that there was a guy on one of his, on his team that was you know, out there living the good life, you know, and the like, and, and said, yeah. man, I don't know how you can do what we do, meaning, you know, mm. killing, shooting, you know, all, you know the fear of yeah. dying. How, I don't know how you can do what you do and be a Christian. And his response was, I don't know how we can do what we do and yeah. not be a Christian. Yeah. So my question is, 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 do you think that there is enough sort of Christianity in the military? Be, meaning because they need it so much, it seems. Right. And, but it seems, especially lately, the military has become kind of woke. Yes. I don't know. You tell <laughs> yeah, me. There, yeah, there's a lot there. The, the military has definitely become woke. Now, when when I say the military, really, it's military leadership. It's, it's, yeah. it's honestly, it's leadership from the Department of Defense, administrators, bureaucrats that are pushing down woke agendas on mm -hmm. the military. Um, because a lot of, you know, the men and women who serve are still serving from a desire to serve their country. They're very patriotic. They care about mission more than they care about, you know, all the social uh, re-engineering and structuring that's being done. So mm -hmm. a lot of great people in the military. We need to remember that. But but certainly the military, you know, as an organization, um, in so many ways has gone woke. I mean, we've seen this with the gender stuff. We've seen this with, uh, I mean, most recently with, with all the COVID stuff. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a real challenge. Um, now, you know, anytime anyone asks me in any context, do we need more Christianity? My answer is always going to be yes, yeah. because I, I, you know, I genuinely believe that understanding who God is and having a relationship with him allows us to see the world around us in the right way. Uh, even as culture is swirling out of control and things are all over the place, when we know who we were created to be and what the creation around us, what people around us are supposed to be doing, it gives us the right view. So uh, I think that's very important. To, to your specific point, though, about combat, it, it is really interesting when you study who deals with post-traumatic stress and post-traumatic stress disorder um, and who doesn't. Because, again, there are a lot of folks who serve in the military that uh, have to process what they're dealing with and all those things, but, but don't struggle for the rest of their lives with military mm -hmm. service. And, and we could go to the Bible and see a lot of a lot of examples of folks who uh, love God, serve God, live for God, and did some crazy stuff in you know combat environments up close and personal. When you have the ability to realize that God is outside of our space and time, that there's something bigger than us and something outside of this, um, you know that elevates your view. So you don't look at what's happening or has happened and say this is it. So that gives you hope, right? Because you're looking outside of that. But also when you understand that you are responsible to God, a holy God, a God who created and a God who gives us life and a God who gives us purpose, then it allows you to do the things that are required of our warrior class with character, uh, with high value and morality, and do it in a way that is um, a reflection of integrity. It's sincere. Again, a lot of character. So... I don't know, and I, I, I've had this conversation many, many times. I don't know how people can reject God and still do what is required of, um, you know, a service mm -hmm. member and come out on the other side with any hope, with any direction, yeah. um, with any will to even move forward. It is God understanding him, understanding his will for our lives. It gives us the context we need to process the things that have happened and are happening and uh, yeah, that's very, very important to me. And and in the military, I think there are opportunities for sincere people of faith to live that out and then have the opportunity to communicate that to others. So it's very, very important. Very important. Yeah, it is. And a really great point that it's important in all aspects of life, uh, I would say. Yeah, Definitely right, in the military. Right. I mean, I, sure. I tell you, if I did join the military and I did go over and I did fight, it would it would have made me 
uh, more religious just out mm. of the from the standpoint of being <laughs> scared to death like okay right, any right. minute i could die here <laughs> i don't have yeah. that same fear sitting in my house or driving somewhere but i would if i uh yeah you know if i have em enemies shooting at me and i don't want to die right uh, and, a bad person you know? and there's and there is so there are kind of two sides to it i think it's important to to recognize that there is the faith side where i'm in danger and and you know, eternity has to be real, right? So let me understand that and let me mm -hmm. live in a way that uh, would allow me to die well. But there's the other part. And, and for those that have served and particularly served in combat environments, I, I think this would be a common understanding that you go to these places and everything that you believe to be right and true is flipped upside down. And, and having the ability to contextualize what is happening around you, to make sense of it, to put it in some kind of a, a cosmological framework that actually makes sense. Uh, man, how do you do that without faith? I, I, I don't know how, how people do. I, I think it becomes um, very dark and very hopeless um, because there's nothing that allows you to make sense of that. And, and a relationship with God allows you to make sense of that. Yeah, definitely. Very well put. Very well put. Mm. Well, Jeremy, so just to uh, answer your question from a little bit earlier, you are a great guest and, and I've re <laughs> well, I really, appreciate I, it. Yeah. I wasn't asking for that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but I know what you mean. And I, and I, I know a hundred percent what you mean. And I always judge it by, by when, when a discussion goes into an area that I didn't expect, but mm, I sure. wanted to want to keep talking. And I, uh, whenever I say, Hey, I can keep talking to you for hours. Mm -hmm. That's when I know I have a good show. But sure. I promised my listeners less than that. Right. <laughs> you know, but, but, you right. know, yeah, I mean, so Jeremy Stallnecker, uh, go to, please go to jeremystallnecker.com. Uh, check him out. Check out his podcast. Get his books. Share them with others. And uh, if you need him in his uh, organization, Mighty Oaks Foundation, uh, please, please reach out. I know he wants yes. you to. Uh, right. Jeremy, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. No, thank you. Great conversation. Yeah, my pleasure. And thank all of you for listening to this episode of Feed Ace Podcast. Please check out all my podcasts and all the different podcast apps on YouTube, on Rumble, and on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on rightamericamedia.com. So thank you again for listening, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>